Alrighty, yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy Mr. DDG94 here back with another reaction video. Today we're going to react to Lil Wayne's albums ranked worst to best by Culturalist Theory. They make new episodes every Tuesday. Make sure you go check them out. They need more subscribers over there. They should be at silver status right now. The production, the quality of these episodes have been amazing. Y'all definitely need to go check them out, man. Um, I'm gonna definitely do some R&B ones, but for right now we're just doing a straight up uh, hip hop, hip hop artists. But we definitely gonna do some. Um, we definitely gonna do some. Um, some some uh, R&B artists on here too, but we'll, we'll do that one another bit because I got R&B on here too. So we're definitely gonna do some R&B artists. But uh, for right now we're just gonna keep it rap. For right now this is Lil Wayne, rank worst to best. Hmm. I know Lil Wayne heads will always say that the Carter 2 is the best one out of his entire Carter series. But in my personal opinion, because I was never a Lil Wayne fan. I didn't I didn't really fuck with Lil Wayne like that. Especially him and Birdman kissing kissing each other on the lips. Yeah, I was kind of worried about I was like, yeah, y'all like a nigga that kiss another nigga on the lips? I, I, hey, man, I ain't judging. But back in them days in 2006, bro, 2005, whenever that fucking photo surfaced on the internet, bro, Nigga, I wasn't fucking with it, bro. But if hey, I was a hey, back in them times, bro, it's different. But listen, but now, hey, you like who you like, man. I ain't gonna lie. I used to hate Lil Wayne, bro. I used to hate when people used to bring him, but people because I always used to bring up him kissing another man on the lips, and they would be like, so, so, so. He's still the best rapper, though. He's still the best rapper. They ain't got, bro. He kissing another man on the lips. They got, every, bro. That is nasty, bro. That's gay as fuck, my nigga. Cause I used, cause I was a Ti and Kanye fan. I used to think that Ti and Kanye. Was was the creme de la creme of the rap game at that time frame. I didn't think nothing of Lil Wayne. I thought Lil Wayne was just here. He had some good features. I thought that's what he was. I thought he was just a good feature guy. But man. Carter 3. No ceilings. And then we going to skip over that rap album and that other album that he tried to put out. And then we're going to go to Carter 4. <laughs> but he came back with six foot seven and said, real G's moving silence like lasagna. Nigga. I couldn't even debate it no more. I couldn't even debate it no more. I said, y'all got it, bro. Lil Wayne is that nigga, bro. Y'all got it, bro. <laughs> Because I tried to find any excuse, bro. Even though Kanye was still going hard. Because T.I., he did Paper Trail. And I was like, see, yeah, he can't fuck with that, bro. Because Paper Trail going harder than Carter Carter 3, bro. We was all listening to Carter 3 all summer. Then T.I. dropped Paper Trail. Now what y'all got to say? Y'all bumping that Paper Trail money. Y'all bumping that Carter 3. But then they dropped that Young Money album. And then that No Ceilings mixtape came out. I had, to, but, 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 Kanye dropped my beautiful dark uh, twisted fantasy. So, <laughs> can nobody say shit to me? But then he dropped six foot seven and said, "Real G's move the silence like with Sanya." I couldn't even argue with nobody no more about it. He had it at that point. I said, "Dog." Little, I said Kanye dropped the best album of the year, but Wayne just dropped one of the hardest fucking verses I heard at that time. Real G's moving silence like lasagna, cause you never thought about it though, cause there is a G in lasagna, but it's silent as fuck. And then the way he metaphorically used it, I was like, damn, this nigga really is cold. But anyway, so let's get into this though. Let's get into this. This is CJ Williams for Culturalist Theory. And for this video, we're taking a look at Lil Wayne's discography, breaking his albums from worst to first. No, this list will not include his mixtapes or any compilations and will only involve Will only include his albums, not his mixtapes. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a list. Number 13, Rebirth. Oh this God. Is as no surprise, but the experimental rock album from Lil Wayne. Straight garbage. 
This was dog shit. I was like, nigga, y'all really rocking with this nigga? He just put this garbage ass album out. And then it was like, so, 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 and blah, 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 blah. And then Drake put out Take Care, uh, not Take Care, but Thank Me Later. And I was like, see, his protege just made a better album than him. How y'all gonna sit up here and say this, man? Bro, I was shitting on everybody with this Rebirth album. I had everybody get right there with that Rebirth album. Then Kanye dropped motherfucking My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. I was like, yeah, buddy. But then he dropped that goddamn six foot seven. Real G's move of silence like lasagna. God damn. Lands at the bottom of our list. But this was, we'll this was hot first garbage. Stepping outside his lane to try his hand at rock, but the project didn't work or really resonate with consumers either. After selling 176,000 its first week, it eventually reached platinum, but the album before it, Carter Three, went platinum in one week. With that said, there's a few joints. The lead single, Prom Queen, the Eminem assisted, Drop the World, On Fire and Running were good records, but that's about it. And it was grand opening, grand closing for Wayne's rock and roll career. Number 12, Free Weezy album. We debated on counting this project, but it is listed as an official album from Wayne. Don't worry, this will be quick. This was around the time Wayne was in label purgatory and wanted to be released from longtime label cash money. The album was a title exclusive when it came out in 2015, so it would take five years for the project to reach other streaming sites in 2020. Although there's some bars on there and the street change record is hard, everything else, not so much. How about we blame this album on label politics? Sound good? Cool. On to the next one. Number 11, 500 Degrees. Things were looking bleak for Cash Money Records in 2002 when Lil Wayne was the last man standing after the departure of label mates Juvenile, BG, and Turk. To prove the label was in good hands, Wayne dropped 500 Degrees in an attempt to one-up the 400 Degrees album by Juvie that came out in 98. Unfortunately, this project came nowhere close. Hey. I don't know if he did a Juvenile album, but if he did a Juvenile, bro, we got, bro. Hey. This is really, hey, this is really why I never liked Lil Wayne. This is really why I never liked Lil Wayne, because he did this bullshit right here. The 500 Degrees album is what really made me hate, because I used to like Lil Wayne. I used to like him. I was like, yeah, I like Lil Wayne. Then he did this bullshit, and did Ju uh, on Juvenile. He tried to do this shit on Juvenile, and Juvenile was my favorite fucking artist around this time, bro. It was Juvenile. It was Juvenile, Ludacris, DMX, yeah, Kanye didn't come out yet, Kanye didn't come out yet, so it was Juvenile, Ludacris, and DMX, those were my three favorite artists, oh yeah, Lil Bow Wow, Lil Bow Wow, <laughs> I, I don't know why I keep acting like I wasn't a Bow Wow fan. I mean, you know how you, hey man, it was it's a lot of closet Bow Wow fans. We just, it's just now we can appreciate him more now that we're older, bro. It's just that now that we're older, we appreciate him more. We appreciate his music more for the times that he was. But yeah, I was, yeah, I was, I, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie, cause Bow Wow, Bow Wow, Bow Wow was the first CD I ever owned. Yep, that was the first CD I ever owned. Got that. Got that Beware the uh, Beware the Dog album for Chris Christmas. You couldn't tell me shit. You couldn't tell me shit. I used to have my braids like Bow Wow. I used to have my braids like Bow Wow and Nolan Iverson, bro. Those those are my those are my idols back then, bro. As a kid, those were my idols. Now. Alan Iverson is still my idol. Bow Wow, we've we've parted ways a long time ago. But anyways, though, yeah, I, I couldn't fuck with. This is what made me really hate Lil Wayne, bro. Because Juvenile was my favorite artist around this time, bro. Close to the class of Juvia. While he still had Manny Fresh behind the board, the production wasn't as sharp, and Wayne hadn't taken that next step up lyrically that we've been hoping for. There's likable records on here. Gangsta shit, Young and Blues, and F.U. were highlights, but the album is weighed down by unnecessary skits and average production. Obviously, we know Wayne would rebound and bring the label back to prominence, but at the time, the pressure was too much for Wayne's 19-year-old shoulders to bear. Number 10, I Am Not a Human Being. Yeah, Not this is... His this was garbage too. This was garbage. The only good song on here was the songs that had Drake on them. The songs that had Drake on them, fire. Everything else on this album, straight garbage. I was like, this is y'all king. This is who the number one rapper is. And all these, I was, bro, 
I was a Lil Wayne hater, bro, but then real G's move in silence like lasagna. I, just, I couldn't deny him no more. I am not a human being, sir. He has a decent holdover project as we wait to for his release. At the time, Young Money was rebranding itself and the new artists, Nicki Minaj and Drake, were in charge of holding the label up while Wayne was down. Weezy was well aware of that and put Drake all over this album. Dreezy is on every other song for the first seven tracks. Smart move as those are some of the dopest records on the album. See? You, right above it and I'm Single did just enough to make the album serviceable and warrant a couple of repeat listens. Number nine, I Am Not A Human Being 2. Every once in a while you'll come across an album as a whole that's just okay but the record that are good or too big to ignore. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a good album, man. It was it was a solid album, but realistically, the only songs that hit were the ones that were singles, bro. The Big Sean album, the Big Sean song, the My Homie Still, you pump that baby, pump that baby, pump that baby, My Homie Still, but that rich as fuck with 2 chains, that rich as fuck. Look at you, now look at us. All my niggas are rich as fuck. We was bumping that shit, bro. That was my senior year of high school, too, bro. That was my senior year of high school, bro. We was bumping that shit. <laughs> Shout out to my niggas, man. Shout out to all my niggas, man. But, um, yeah, all oh, the, uh, the future song with Drake. I guess my bitch love me. My bitch love me. My bitch love me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I ain't give a fuck about no hate as long as these bitches love. That, it was a solid album. It was a good album. But them three songs was the only highlights of it. That's the exact case with I Am Not A Human Being 2. You can credit three records as the main reason this album is number nine instead of, say, 12. And that's No Worries, Rich AF with 2 Chains, and Love Me featuring Drake and Future. Those records made waves and single-handedly hold the project up. See, Wayne went through a two to three year phase where he rapped about nothing but his sexual activity. Yeah. In specific, there are 63 references to sex on the album. Yeah. If you're here and for this that, is, then And then this is when I went back to say he is trash. That's when I went back to say he trash. This nigga trash. All this nigga talking about is pussy, bro. That's all this nigga talking about is pussy, bro. Pussy, pussy, pussy. And he got pussy metaphors for days. Ain't nobody trying to hear all this shit, bro. Rap like how you was trying to rap, bro. Real Real G's move in silence like lasagna. That's a hard ass bar. But nigga, when you start just rapping about pussy nonstop, how the fuck am I supposed to get? No. This album's for you. If not, you likely didn't run this one back much. All not at all. Better than part one, making it one of those rare occasions where the sequel is better than the original, even if the improvements are marginal. At least he was able to get Kanye to design the cover. That's kind of dope. Number eight, Funeral. Wayne's latest album, Funeral, comes in at just above the top half of our list, but still was a respectable effort from the veteran MC. Lyrically, Wayne still has it. The flow is fierce and the bars are crafty. Joints like Mahogany, Wild Dogs, and Harden are a few standouts. While the album doesn't have any big singles, Funeral landed number one on Billboard, proving Wheezy still moves the needle. The latter half of the lengthy project is clearly its strongest, and the album sometimes feels more like a mixtape, but good stuff nonetheless. Also, shout out to Wayne for paying his respects to the late, great Kobe Bryant a few times on here. Track number eight, Bing James, has a 24 second moment of silence at the end. The album consists of 24 tracks, and the deluxe edition was eight tracks long. Of course, paying homage to Kobe's two jersey numbers. Number seven, the Carter Five. After four years of delays and pump fakes, Lil Wayne finally released the fifth installment in his stellar Carter series. Thankfully, he did the series justice as overall the project is strong. He hit on his single Uproar, which caught fire thanks to a viral dance challenge and he flexed his storytelling muscles on Mona Lisa, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Other standouts were Don't Cry, featuring a haunting hook from the late XXX Tentacion, Famous, featuring his daughter Regine, and Let It All Work Out, featuring a fire sample sample. However, the issue with the album is it's just too long. Wayne emptied the hard drive to the tune of 90 minutes, plus an extra 40 more minutes if you count the bonus tracks and deluxe edition. That's two hours of music, which is crazy. But it was still solid, though. It was still solid. 
So much so that it went number one selling 480,000 copies first week. Number six, Lights Out. Wayne has always had potential. You saw it early during the Hot Boy days and with his solo debut. He looked to take a step up with his sophomore album, Lights Out, and while it was good, it was more like a sidestep than forward progress. Only a teenager at the time, Wayne added a unique perspective to cash money. For example, joints like Everything and Grown Man. No one else on the label could bring that vibe because they were older. Add that to his natural talent, which was flexed on joints like Get Off the Corner and F With Me Now, where he switched his flow up and you have a solid second effort just not the leap that some had hoped for. Number five, the block is hot. If you follow Cash Money in the 90s, yep. you knew they had two all-stars in BG and Juvenile. But you also knew they had a youngster on the bench that had all the potential in the world by the name of Lil Wayne. Well, November of 99, a newly turned 17-year-old Wayne dropped the debut album, The Block is Hot. Black Originally is hot, the black is hot. The black 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 is hot, the black she agreed under one condition he couldn't curse so the fact that outside of one record after world he's not even cursing and you don't even notice it's impressive given the subject matter wayne spazzes on joints like enemy turf featuring juvenile the title track and come on featuring bg but it's the creativity and the way he delivers the lyrics that stands out most the sound effects he makes on joints like loud pipes bring a completely different dynamic than his hot boy brethren and if you're of a certain age from a certain region of the country then you know exactly what that Loud Pipes did Teen Night at the Club. Before we get to these top four albums, if you've been paying attention, then you know what these four are. Leave me a comment below and tell me your theory. Rank the, the Carter, Carter series. series. All five of them. All right, now back to the list. It's the whole Number Carter four, series. Carter one. Two years after the disappointing 500 Degrees, Wayne had a major bounce back album with the first edition of the classic Carter series. Sporting a new, more precise flow, Wayne was in his bag the entire album. Joints like BMJR, We Don't, and Only Way showed Weezy had stepped his lyrical game up considerably. To some, this seems suspicious as rumors began to surface that fellow Cash Money artist Gilly the Kid was responsible for writing the entire album. Now, if you were a yeah. casual Wayne fan, maybe this makes sense because Carter One and 500 Degrees were night and day. However, if you really followed Wayne, then you were familiar with the squad mixtape series he had been putting out and you know Wayne had been in the gym getting shots up. So becoming an all-star with Carter One wasn't a reach. Besides, for us to believe that this album was ghost-written means we have to believe Gilly wrote I Miss My dogs, which is highly unlikely. Also, this album is notable because it's the last time Wayne worked exclusively with in-house producer Manny Fresh. Yep. Number three, the Carter Four. The sleeper of the Carter series is hands down the Carter Four. Yep. It's understandable why it took a while for people to really respect this album. The two projects that preceded it are two of Wayne's worst. I Am Not a Human Being and Reaper. However, Carter Four has a lot to like. Big singles like Six Foot, Seven Foot, she will and John. The yep. letter containing the best Rick Ross feature, not named Devil in a New Day. And that John goes, Hey, I'm not a star. Somebody that I got a chopper in the car. Nigga, they was nigga they was Ross and Wayne was coasting on that beat, nigga. They was coasting on that beat, nigga. Bro, Ross and Wayne was just going crazy on that beat, bro. That shit go hard. Hey, I might, I might just listen to that one after, after this, bro. That right. shit, then that the shit was so like fucking hard. Blunt blowing and it's good. And you have a top three Wayne album. The record is also notable for having the first verse from former Bad Boy rapper Shine after his release from a 10-year prison bid. And although his voice sounded drastically different from when he went in at the time, it turned many fans off. I think it's safe to finally admit that I killed that outro verse. Number two, the Carter Three. Four wow. Five. So he go fall in line with the Wayne heads. The Wayne heads all say that Carter Two is his best body of work. Like I said, for 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 me, I'm on the outside looking in. I'm not listening to the the mixtapes outside of uh, No Ceilings, the first one. I only like No Ceilings. That's the only mixtape I think I've ever listened to by Wayne. Other than that, I've never listened to any of the other stuff. And y'all going to be like, man, you missing out on a lot. You missing out on a lot. I probably am. And I still am. I don't care, bro. I'm not, bro, I'm not a Lil Wayne fan at all. I'm still not a Lil Wayne fan. I just appreciate him more. Considering the music that we get now, I appreciate him more. You know what I'm saying? But back then, when the competition was heavy, and you had a variety of rappers with different sounds and different unique flows and stuff like that, and everybody was different, now everybody just sound the same now. 
So it's like I appreciate Wayne more now. But back then when everybody was different, everybody had their own unique flow and their own style and how they went about how they made their records. Bro, I was not fucking with Wayne. I still don't. That nigga kissed the man in the mouth. I, was, I, I, I ain't got nothing against gay people, but I'm just saying, bro. I, I can't, I can't, I can't be down with no nigga that do that shit. That's just not me. I can't do that. Y'all can do that if y'all want to. That's y'all. Especially in rap, three years can be a lifetime. But I feel you like Carter Three is his best album. Or your career can that's just me personally. From maybe being popular to be too many bangers. Name. And that's exactly what happened between 05 when Carter Two dropped. And too many bangers, bro. Carter Three debut. Thanks to his ridiculous work ethic, mixtape Weezy came alive, dropping two classic gangster grills tapes and the Drought Three mixtape during this time. In 36 months, Wayne had become the hottest rapper on the planet. As we all know, C3 sold one million million copies its first week thanks to the smashes lollipop and a million but the album was deeper than just its singles let the beat build you ain't got nothing let the beat build bro that shit go hard bro let the beat build uh you already know we 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 Y'all already know. Y'all already... Hey, I was getting hella pussy that song, nigga. I ain't gonna, uh, I ain't gonna be a hug you, bro. That wee, wee, wee. I was getting hella pussy to that song, bro. I ain't even gonna hug you, bro. Hell yeah, nigga. My eighth grade year. My eighth grade year elementary school. Wee, 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 wee. Nigga, that was... Ooh! I was back here. Bad bitches, bro. That's when I gained all my confidence, bro. Eighth grade, boy. I gained all my confidence, bro. Just off this one song. And then the, uh, damn, what was another song? The Got Money song. The, uh, the Mr. Carter song was cool. It was all right. Uh, shit, what was another good song on here? I'm trying to think. I'm not trying to miss all the songs. Oh, Misunderstood, I think, was on here. It's, it's a lot of good songs on Carter 3, bro. I, in my personal opinion, Carter 3 is number one. But I know Wayne Head's going to say Carter 2 is his best body of work because y'all was rocking with the nigga back then. I I ain't really jump in with the nigga until fucking Carter 3 came out. Carter 3, I was like, okay, I can vibe with this nigga because he was all over the radio. I couldn't deny I couldn't deny the music, but I still wasn't putting him over T.I. and uh, Kanye at that time. And Shoot Me Down were all dope. Even the GOAT himself, Jay-Z, made a guest appearance on Mr. Carter, essentially passing the torch to Wayne. The album has gone over six times platinum and won the Grammy for Rap Album of the Year in 2009. As it should. Number one, Carter Two. When reflecting back on Wayne's career, the defining project in his catalog without question dropped on December 6, 2005. The Carter Two shows Wayne at his best lyrically, boldly proclaiming himself the best rapper alive. After hearing this, not many questioned it, Wayne decided to go in a different direction with the production as Cash Money in-house producer Manny Fresh had departed from the label by this point. The gamble worked as highlights are endless, from Bangers Money on My Mind, Hustler Music, yep. and Hit Em Up, to the reflective records like Grown Man and Receipt. But it's the standout track, Best Rapper Alive, which instantly put Wayne at the top of your favorite rapper list. The second verse on that track is arguably his hardest 16. You can debate whether you believe this is a classic or not. We wouldn't be mad either. But what's not debatable is that this is his best body of work as it relates to albums. Now, mixtapes are another discussion. A list for another day, possibly. Mm. That's it for our little Wayne. Mm, I don't know nothing about his mixtape work. Other than no siblings, I don't know nothing. I don't know shit about little Wayne uh, mixtapes, bruh. But, yeah, man, that just go about do it for this one. Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, bruh. I was getting hella pussy to some little wing to the Carter Three. When the Carter Three came out, I was getting hella pussy, bro. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. <laughs> that was a good time. That shit just took me back. Wee 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 wee. That shit took me back, bro. But anyways, though, um, let me know what y'all think down below in the comment section below. Did he get it right? Do y'all think that some albums should have been ranked over? Because I'm pretty sure all y'all Wayne heads are going to agree that Carter 2 is the best one. Me, personally, it's Carter 3. I, I Like I said, I, I just too many bangers on there, bro. Too many bangers for me, personally. But, um, pause. But, um, yeah, man, just, just. Let me know what y'all think down below in the comment section below. I'll get back to you till then. Peace out.